everyone. Um, I hope you had a great weekend. My name's Jenny and I'm with Philbrook Museum of Art and I'm back, if you can believe it, with our 15th week of Family Art Club. And so I'm actually going to be building on some of the things I did last week with my giant bubble recipe. We are going to be continuing the bubble theme and doing some really fun bubble painting today. All you're going to need to do this activity um, is some kind of dish detergent. Um, I, I have Dawn here and I'll probably also use just some clear dish detergent because I don't always want the color of the blue Dawn to uh, interact with the color of my paint. I also have washable temper paint. I'm going to do green and blue today and some water, some bubble wands that I made kind of really simply from uh, pipe cleaners. These I made with pipe cleaners and sticks from my backyard. Um, for a more detailed tutorial, you can watch last week's uh, bubble episode. Um, I've also got some paper cups or really any kind of container. This is going to hold our bubble solution. Um, I have paper straws. They can be plastic straws or paper straws. It's just what I ha happen to have on hand. A couple spoons and some brushes. And of course, my handy dandy tray with some pretty thick multi-purpose paper. Um, you can use watercolor paper. You want to use a paper that's a little thicker just because we're working with wet media. I've got some paper towels over there on the side and just in case I have any issues. Um, this activity is super fun but I um, would really encourage you all to be doing it outside. Um, I'm going to show you a couple different techniques for bubble painting. I am going to be like pretty clean and contained, but you know, anybody around bubbles, especially when there's paint involved, an outside adventure is probably going to be your best bet. So I guess for this episode, it's just kind of like do what I say, not as I do, because here I am in my dining room. So I've already tested this with some yellow, and so as my paper dries, um, I will start making our colors of the blue and the green. So I'm going to set my paper to the side here, and I'm going to put my cups here. In each one, I'm going to put a good amount of temper paint. The more pigment you add, the more pigment you'll have in your bubble solution. But it's not like you want to add a ton just because um, it'll be kind of, you'll have to add more soap that way. So I've got my paint in there. In the blue, I'm going to use Dawn. Just because I feel like generally Dawn is a better... Uh, soap for bubbles um, but in the green I don't want to interact too much with the color of the screen so I'm just going to use a clear soap but you can use whatever dishwashing detergent you have on hand I might start with like kind of a, a bit of soap quite a bit and we'll see how we go um, then I've got some water I am going to try and add as little water as possible for this mixture um, just because I want my bubbles to be pretty pigmented and the more water you add the more water down your pigment gets. So I'm just going to add a little bit of a at a time and use my spoons to stir them up. Until and the tempera is water based. So it will dissolve really easily. So that is probably too thick for bubble mixture. So I'm going to add a little more water. A 
Let's try the blue here. And I feel like this blue is already, it's a little, maybe I added a little bit more water at the get go because it is feeling a lot more liquidy. It's also already like pretty bubbly. Whereas the green with the clear soap is okay. Maybe I'll squirt some more in there. I just feel like the Dawn is just a little soapier. That might just be my perceptions. I'm sure whatever that dish soap is, is just fine. Okay, so then I've got my bubble solution. You can see it's like pretty blue and also pretty watery and that's kind of what I want. And I've got my paper straws or straws with a kiddo if you're doing this. Um, you want to make sure to talk to them about, you know, usually when we're drinking, we're using straws, we're sucking up um, liquid, like we're drinking a soda or some water or something. But with this, you just really want to make sure that you are, you kind of talk to them about blowing and maybe practice with really littles. I like to practice beforehand. So before you put it in the liquid at all, practice blowing out the straw without sucking in any air. Um, with older kids, obviously, they know the difference between, um, and like the difference between like sucking up soda versus sucking up bubble liquid. But with really littles, it's just a good idea to kind of do a run through. Even though everything is non-toxic, it's just not going to taste good. And it's just like saving you some tears, really. So I'm going to start by kind of seeing how the bubble mixture is working by just blowing into my bubble solution. Kids will love this part. It's like blowing. It reminds me of blowing milk bubbles when I was a little kid. And your parents always told you like not to blow bubbles at the dinner table. So got some pretty good bubbles there. Let's try it with this one. Some good bubbles here too. I like how these are a little bit smaller than these. Um, they'll give a finer texture when we make bubbles. So now I'm going to bring in my piece of paper and I'm going to show you two different methods for putting, for using the bubbles to paint with. So first, um, I am going to actually dip my paintbrush in some water because as you know, if you have dry tools, the bubbles will pop when you grab them. But if you have wet tools, they won't quite pop as quickly. So these are already So a lot of times when I'm working with kids, I like to just put out a variety of materials and let them experiment and ask them questions as they experiment with their tools. So you might just place bubbles onto your paper. Using the straw to blow the bubbles. That's pretty fun. Let's try it with the blue. This is probably the cleanest way to do it, which is kind of why, why, why I'm kind of going for it in my house right now.
I like my bubbles have kind of touched and it looks like they're they formed one big bubble pod let's bring in my yellow from earlier and in this one I have a bubble wand actually in here from when I was testing I'm gonna just drop it here in the water Plop some yellow on there. And this is really fun. You can make some really cool background texture on these paper, on this paper that you can then collage onto or whatever. I'm gonna wipe my hands on my apron. The colors are mixing in an interesting way. And I can tell from where the bubbles have popped. You, it's, you can't see it from here, but the bubbles are popping and they're slowly popping and they're leaving an interesting um, kind of circular bubble shape behind. Um, I have one spot that is kind of where I think some of my yellow paint kind of plopped out like too much of it. And so I'm just gonna use a paper towel to soak up some of the extra paint. I'm not, I'm not smooshing it around. I'm just placing the paper towel on the paper and then the, it'll soak up itself and that will get rid of our um, kind of really overly wet areas. And it'll just dry nicer that way. Um, you could do one color at a time and layer. And like I said, the more paint you use, the more pigmented um, your bubbles will be. You can also use your bubble wand. So I'm actually gonna try and do a blue one over here where I just sopped up some of that mess from the yellow. Like I said, this is definitely one that you want to do outside, but it is is like totally water um, washable. So, and this, I'm trying to blow it very gently, so that's why it's just kind of like blah, because I just don't want to like spread it all throughout my house, um, and I don't want to have a bubble kind of go where it doesn't need to be going but if you're outside you could be blowing a bunch of bubbles and catch them with your paper and that could be pretty cool or you could lay out a ton of like butcher paper out on the sidewalk and then just blow bubbles and whatever lands on the paper stays on the paper and then if it gets on the grass or something um it's just gonna wash off so it's not a big deal because we're using tempera. But yeah. So I think I am being too careful with my bubbles to do that, to be blowing them inside. But yeah, you can always make a bubble wand and blow it outside. And then you could also experiment with using a paintbrush um, to move the bubbles or to distribute the bubbles or to move some of your popped, like I've got some of this painty liquid that's kind of just um, liquid sitting on, it's like overly liquidy on my paper and you can just paint with that. And the bubbles that are left behind will create some kind of um, texture when they dry. And so what you're gonna do is as you have this bubble, um, here, let me move this off to the side. You have this uh, bubble sheet. I'm gonna let this completely dry before I move move it um, because I really want these bubbles, they'll, as they dry, 
they will create this kind of interesting watercolor texture. And plus, it's just a really fun activity to get, get kids outside and moving around and creating art while just having fun. So everybody loves bubbles and everybody loves painting. And so this is some messy, clean fun. And when I say clean, it's like not actually clean. It's actually quite messy, but you can clean up later. So I hope you all have fun. I hope you try it out. And like I said, if you are interested in more bubble activities, check out um, last week's video where I made a giant, super strong bubble solution to make giant bubbles, as well as two different kinds of bubble wands um, that are super fun. Also, if you're just tired of all that, I will say um, I've also launched Art Club or Art, Art Camp from Home. And if you, I'm working with five different local artists here in Tulsa, and they've created these amazing projects that are super fun, like natural dyes, felting, painting tiny doors, making wonder bottles or fairy bottles, wonder crowns and uh, even a pizza a pillow that looks like a slice of pizza. It's called a pizza party pillow. They say that three times fast. But you can check out our, our virtual art camp offerings on our website or on our shop website. So philbrook.org or shop.philbrook.org. And I will see you next week for another round of Family Art Club. Have a good week, everyone.